Hello, welcome to another video and today we're going to talk about how do you structure your data map because there's domains there and there's collections and how should you think and what should you do? So that's what we're going to look at in this video. As always, we're going to start out with uh, going to solutions, opening the data map. And inside the data map here, you see the structure that I've already created. So previously in my previous videos, I have only created one collection. And that, that is a fabric collection. And that's where I've essentially scanned all my fabric data. And we also have a Pervy Data Catalog default domain. So that was already there when I created my uh, Pervy instance. So that's, that just exists by default. And now the thing is that I can create uh, collections below my domain. domain. So I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to create a couple of collections for us to show you what this looks like structurally. And then we're going to discuss what you should think about when you're deciding on how you should create your uh, structures. So I'm going to create one RFP system. Uh, I'm going to put myself as admin, of course. Uh, and now you see that I've created a separate collection that I think that I could put all my RFP systems in, or I can scan those or this one system. So let's just also create one more. So I'm going to click on domains to create a new collection again. Uh, and now I want to create a collection for my master data management uh, solution. So that will be all the data for my master data management system. So I'm going to create that as well. And now I can also create sub collections. So if I click on that one collection and click new collection again, I'm essentially creating a sub uh, collection. And you see here, Pervy Data Catalog, MDN system, that's the path of my new collection. And now I created um, a collection for my master data management development environment. And I'm also going to create one for my master data management production environment. So we have created two uh, sub uh, collections below my uh, master data management system. Yes. Now, if we go into data sources, you're going to see the actual structure and the map view of what this looks like. So you see that we have one domain on top and now we have three different collections. We can open up the fabric collections because you see here, I already scanned and registered my source. I can now actively register my RFP system and I can also open up the MDM system and see that we have another level with the development and production environment as well. Now I could also then register my systems and add them directly to uh, these collections. So these systems will be the actual physical applications that I want to scan. I want to now, I also want to give you a tip that's governance domains and domain recommendation. This is an article that uh, is on Microsoft Learn and it got this um, view here, this picture, this diagram that I think is really interesting. It's going to help us to understand this better. So if I open this up and you look at the green box here and you look at uh, the physical data estate, that is your data map. We see here we have data collections, we have physical data sources, we also have IT roles and permissions. Uh, and you also see that you can have devs test and production because you have those layers. And I think this is really important to be aware of in order to understand how, what you th should think about when you're creating your data map. Uh, because collections and domains are used uh, specifically for this technical separation along IT teams, right? Uh, and also if you want to look at access segmentation, so we're looking at technical, physical things that we want to separate access levels on. So for instance, you might have this master data management system that you want to look at. And that's the system you want to only have, uh, maybe that's supposed to be open to anyone. Cool, then you can put that into a separate collection and essentially give different levels of access inside of Purview for people to be able to view and discover that metadata. metadata. And that's essentially what you want to Think about when you're creating this. Do I want everyone to be able to view this data or should this be limited? Is maybe some of this data sensitive? Okay, maybe that means that you should have separate collections. Maybe you have some sensitive data in your RFP system, then you might have, want to have a separate uh, sub uh, collection with RFP um, open <laughs> on RFP data sensitive, for instance, because that's what you need to think about. Who should have access to look at this inside a purview? Should people be able to discover it? Again, it doesn't mean that they, you're giving access to the underlying data. So if I give access to the MDM uh, system collection here for read access, for instance, that doesn't mean that people can go into the MDM system uh, specifically into that application and get access to the data. It only means that they're able to read and view the metadata that we have scanned inside of Purview. 
but that's what you can separate on so that's one thing you need to uh, think about the other thing is that since you are in the physical data state we're inside a data map that's the key point here the physical data state that's something we can touch and feel that means that we're looking at physical applications um, and that usually means that we have some application owner so again what makes sense for you in your organization do you have one owner of the master data management system cool then that may it would make sense to separate that or maybe your it department is organized i don't know more in another way and uh, then maybe that's also what you want to mimic but i think key point here is we're thinking about physical stuff who should have access to what um and who own these physical assets because then you can have owners and admins of collections and then they will manage and think about and care about and govern their own uh, collections all right so that was collections but there's more there's more to look at so i'm going to go into my domains view again and the thing that we haven't discussed yet is domains so you could also decide to actually create separate domains now the domain I have here is the one that was default created for me, but I can also decide to have multiple domains. So I'm just gonna show you how you could do that. So let's say that we have, uh, I don't know, daughter companies in my data send company. I have a lot of companies inside that company. So I want company A to be a separate domain because I do want to have more of a separation on the governance level of that. So that could be a use case. You have separate companies or for some reason you want more separation. And it makes sense to separate this way. That could be one. And also if we go into the recommendations here again, but if you scroll down here, see recommended use for the domains in the data map, you see life cycle management, development, test, quality assurance, and production. You might want to separate on that as well. And there's two ways to think here because you might want to separate on development, quality uh, or test and production for your assets. So maybe you have, uh, have these uh, environments for all of your applications and you want to have that part of the application scan there and that part of the application scan there again because you want to have separation but it could also be that you want to look at separation from your your purview technical uh, point of view because when you're scanning things in purview and especially if you're working with the underlying atlas apis and so on and like hacking away a bit to make perfect lineage or whatever you want to uh, use I haven't talked about uh, the Atlas API yet, but I'm gonna do that later on. You uh, might want to have maybe a test domain in purview that is used for testing of scans and so on for yourself. So you're not actually setting up a test environment for the test data of this application that you want to scan or the test environment of this application you want to scan. You're setting up a test environment for yourself in purview because you want to be able to check and see, can I, um, am I able to make this Atlas API thing work with this uh, very weird source that I want to see if I can uh, put in the lineage in Proby, for instance. That's also a use case. So test uh, the production for the applications, of course, you want to do separation on that, either with domains or you can do it with collections as well, as we saw uh, with the master data management that I showed you, uh, or you can do it on the domain level all the way on top. But here you see so if you look at this text here this is important so when there's non-production and production data in the same resource the customer has to use collections because there is also a limitation in purview which is not the negative one it's positive is that you cannot scan the same source twice or that's wrong you can scan it as many times as you want but you can register it more than one time so and that okay is that annoying well no, but I think it's, it also makes perfect sense because that means that you're not able to duplicate any data assets inside of your data map. And that's a good thing. So I'm going to show you uh, that limitation as uh, well when um, I do some more demos here. So there's some things to think about for sure. Now we created our company A. Now I could have created more collections below there. But as we also discussed, let's say that I want to have uh, a test environment uh, where I'm testing purview. I want to see what I can do with different types of um, setups. So I'm going to create a separate uh, domain for that. Of course, I'm going to put myself as admin. Um, and now I have this place where I can play around a bit. 
If you look at the data map now, you see that we have the Purview data catalog domain. We also have company A in Purview test, um, just to show you. And now I could, of course, have created more collections below, um, sub collections below, or registered sources directly uh, on those domains. However, I want it. So there's some flexibility here on how you want to structure it. I think the main point is that you need to think about what you should do before you start doing it, because you should have a plan. Now, let me show you. What if I try to now register fabric in my company A solution? And now this is uh, the same domain um, that I've already, uh, no, the same tenant ID. So I have already scanned my fabric source in my Purview Data Catalog domain, as you see. But if I now try to scan fabric in my company A, it says, nah, yeah, you have already registered this source. You cannot do it again. I could have done it again <laughs> if it was a different fabric altogether. So that would mean that it was a different tenant ID. I had that was a different fabric. Maybe you have some companies that, that do have different tenants, but they're still, uh, they still want to manage uh, their solutions from the same purview or have the governance overview of their data state as a whole of this, uh, uh, all of the companies, I don't know, then that could work. Um, and also this varies from source to source. So let's say that instead, I know I'm going to register my Synapse solution, then I could do that and so on. Now, dependent on the different source you scan, you can separate. Fabric is a software as a service, so you're going to scan the whole thing. That means that you can only, or you can also decide to scan different workspaces. You're registering the whole thing as one thing. Other sources, you might be able to separate because they are separated in nature with servers or databases and so on. So it's going to depend. So depending on your setup, your applications, how your IT department is structured, and maybe how your organization is structured, do you have a lot of daughter companies or I don't know some cool things going on? And that's gonna decide for you how you structure your data map. But I think a uh, tip for me, think about the physical assets, focus on those. Here we are in the physical realm in the data map, which is nice because it's something we can see and touch and feel, we understand it. Um, and think practical. Do, every, should everyone look at this data? Yes or no? Do we need a separate access management control level for this data on the metadata that you want people to be able to access in Perfect? So hopefully you now know what to do with your data map. We went through all the things um, and, whoops, I'm so excited that I'm, I'm, I'm messing up my microphone. Can you imagine? Okay. <laughs> in my next video, I'm going to, uh, talk to you about what so the difference between the uh, domains and the, like the data map and the unified catalog. So in the data map, we have domains, in the unified catalog, we have domain. What should we do? How should we think? Uh, we're going to go through that in the next video. So see you there. Bye.